Hi guys, we're back with Patient 12. This is Sagittarius 9. Let's continue on with the series. Sagittarius 9. Man, his arm will wrap around me all night. His grip was so tight that it felt like he was crushing my ribs. His legs were intertwined with me. His steady rhythmic breath tickled against the back of my neck. The red numbers of the alarm clock resting on the nightstand were blurry. I squinted to have the numbers come into into enough focus so that I could see that it was around one in the morning. I would try to slide my legs out from Ben's. His hold would tighten on me, and he would pull me closer. I need to get out. Of, need I needed to get out of this hotel room. If I could make it out, I would run down to the lobby and beg whoever is working to call the cops. I would see my eyes in. No, something is wrong. If Ben did wake up, he he will probably he will probably chase me without a shirt, and they will see they will see these scaly patches across his chest. Ben wouldn't be able to lie to them about me. We're in contact. I grab Ben's wrist and slowly pull his hands off off me. He stared as his hands left. My body. I sat and turned to look at Ben. He pulled his one hand out of my hole. He he pulled his his one hand out of my hole. He rubbed his eyes with the heel on with the heel of his hand. He saw me s sitting in both his love. What's wrong? He asked. I have to go to the bathroom. I lied. Ben nodded his head. He reached over to the nightstand and turned. On a lamp. The room fell with a dull glow. I stood and my knees wobbled beneath me. Ben's eyes were locked on my body. I took one step behind me toward, toward the door and Ben jumped off of the bed. Diana, what are you doing? He asked. He grabbed my wrist and pulled me closer to his chest. Why are you trying to leave? My chest tightened as I stuck it in a deep breath. Ben pushed me down on the bed. His jaw was clenched and his nostrils were, f and his nostrils were flaring. I winced as he gripped on my wrist. Tighten. He had he had one knee on the bed and was towering over me. Why are you trying to leave me? He asked. I promise you that we will. We will get out of this together, and you agreed to that. You never said that I wouldn't be able to see my family again. I told him, "You don't need to see him. You don't. You don't need to see them." He said, "We have each other. I don't care." Ben eased up on my wrist as he reached over to the nightstand. He opened up the drawer, and I could see. And I could not see what he was pulling out. I saw a flash of silver and cold metal pressed against my temple. Ben's chest was Ben's chest was heaving as he panted for breath. Diana, you said we will get out of this together, he said. Why wouldn't you want why would you want to leave? I love you, Blurred Out. He let out a deep breath and the tension released. From his release from his shoulders, I leaned forward and pressed my lips against his. Ben kissed me back, and the barrel of his gun left from temple. I let out a deep breath through, the, through my nose, and this, and this, I let out a deep breath through my nose, and this caused Ben to let his body sink into mine. I reached and cupped, I reached, I reached and cupped his face. I reached and covered his face with my hands. I'm sorry, I said. I was just scared. That's okay, he, he said. Before pressing his lips against my forehead, just get back to bed. I nodded, and Ben got off of me. He surveyed the room before going around to the other side of the bed. He pulled the nightstand and lamp away and pushed it up and pushed it up against his chest. He went around to the he went around to my side of the bed. He placed his hands on the side and pushed the bed against the wall. Slide over, he said. I looked over at the wall and realized that he was trying to trap me against the wall. And his body 
in his body. I said, Albert, there was no point in, in there was no point in arguing. He would just pull the gun out again and threaten to kill both of us. Ben climbed into the bed. He turned off his he turned off the damp before he held me in his crushing grip. I was going to have I was going to have to play along with his sick fantasy so that I wouldn't die. Ben found a small diner in the morning. Ben found a small diner in the morning after checking us out of the hotel. After checking us out, uh, after checking us out of the hotel, I ran my fingers along with his with the rip vinyl on the seat with the rip vinyl on the seat of of the booth. Ben had the map on the table between us and was sipping on a coffee. Only a few tables had customers by the end. On a, few, on a few tables had customers, by the way, they were talking to each other and, and the, they were talking to each other and the aging, and the aging waitress. I could tell that they were regulars. I, I got a strange look, and any, any time someone turned to look in our direction. We should be at the camp in a few days, he said. I'm going to take a runabout way to get there. It should throw anyone who could be looking for us off our track. And I let my fingers fiddle and spun my empty mug on the, on the table. I just came over to us with two large plates, pile of food. Ben snatched the map off of the table. Here you go, he said. Thank you, Ben said. It should be good for curing that hangover. He nudged my shoulder. She nudged my shoulder and gave and gave me a wink. I miss being John. Ben chuckled as a, as she walked. Ben chuckled as she walked away. I've got to remember that one, he said, as he took a bite of his toast. We're going to look weird. We're going to look weird. We're we're going to look weird, wherever we go. I said the girl. Who won't take off her sunglasses and a boy who won't take off his jacket? Doesn't matter, Ben said. That's why we have. That's why we have. E that's why we have each other. He opened. His, he opened his jacket and and pulled a bottle out from a pocket on the inside. He handed me a, a few pills before taking a couple himself. Ben didn't say anything to me while we finished our breakfast. He had a pencil and was and was catching different different routes to Moscow. Muskoka. I was zoned out as I was zoned out as I was eating and staring out to the grave parking lot. I was brought back into reality when I heard my name. I looked over at Ben to see that he was st he was still s staring at the map. I heard the voice continue to talk. I heard the voice continue to, new to talk, and saw so that it was coming from the old television that was sitting on the corner of the counter. It was a news anchor talking. A red banner was underneath him, but it was too blurry for me to make out. I switched to a photo from my high school graduation. The the curls in my hair that Marcy did that morning were pinned back, and I was in the long black gown with a bouquet of roses in my arms. There was a pang in my chest when I saw my old bright blue eyes. I saw my I saw my old bright blue eyes staring back at me. But noticed me looking to television, he shoved the map into his pocket and placed a few pills on the table. He got up and grabbed my he got up and grabbed my hand. Come on, Olivia, let's go. He said. He pulled me out of the restaurant. The waitress opened her mouth to say something but stopped. 
when, when she saw the money on the table, no one gave the te- no one gave the television a second glance. Thank you for thank you for for much um thank you thank you for watching. See you guys see you guys next part of the video. Thank you thank you for watching. See you guys next part of the video. Bye guys.